Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. It's travel day! Today I'm going to tell you about one of the coolest books I have found in a long time. 50 Wildlife Hotspots by Moose Henderson. You think, Aaron, is this a book review? Well, maybe, but let me tell you in a moment what is all in here. So what's all in the 50 Wildlife Hotspots book by Moose Henderson? Before I get into that, if you could just take a moment, flip down on your phone and punch that subscribe button next to the video or the uh, big subscribe button just below there, that help me keep my channel going and that subscription makes it easier for me to do this. No cost on your part, just click the button, that keeps me going easy enough. Thank you very much. So. Over the years, I've owned quite a few guidebooks. I've got, uh, let's see, I've got probably, I'm looking at my library here, I don't know, 15, 20 plus guidebooks. And I've got my favorite Reader's Digest guidebook from 1982. This guy, I mean, this is super thick. It says North American Wildlife. I don't even have the dust jacket anymore. And it's in beautiful illustrations and tons of information. And that's all great. But where the heck do you go see these animals? And they've got this vague, you know, map here that maybe shows you the range. But, you know, I, I want to go see a ringneck pheasant. I want to go see a loggerhead turtle or, a, you know, chestnut oak or whatever. You're not going to get there with this guidebook. So one of the challenges is with most guidebooks is they'll, they'll tell you the information about the animal, where they generally are situated, and that's it. However, when you go to national parks, you want to say, I want to see elk, grizzlies, other bears, black bears, moose, mountain sheep, uh, bighorn sheep, all this stuff, elk uh, and pronghorn or antelope. And you want to see all of these things, and you have no idea where to go. Well, <laughs> check this out. So. Uh, Sestrugi Press came out with a book called 50 Wildlife Hotspots. And in this book, Moose Henderson, check out the name Moose Henderson, totally cool, gives you the dirty down low, I wouldn't say super secrets, but secret locations where the photographers in the Jackson Hole area go to reliably find animals like grizzlies, animals like little baby foxes and animals like oh i don't know elk check that elk out beautiful animal so this book not only gives you information about the animal say a grizzly bear like hey you know I, I look like you're going to be lunch but it also tells you where to find them now interestingly in all these 50 hot spots there are some animals that are very prevalent like badgers and kip foxes and wolves and other locations they're not very common so even though you would say hey this uh this book about the grand teton national park and surrounding areas which is just south of yellowstone it is in between jackson hole and yellowstone that area other than uh, lamar valley in yellowstone which is a much farther drive the area just north of jackson hole is replete with tons and tons of wildlife. And this book totally tells you how to get there because I've lived in Jackson Hole, gosh, I'd say probably 14, of, 14 years total of my lifetime when I was little and also as an adult. So I've been around and seen a lot of places, but man, I just found stuff in here that literally blew me away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you, let's see, uh, some photographs and ideas. Let me turn the light just a bit so it's not so blown out. So you can see like this place called, it's called Grovant, not the Gros Ventre. It's a French trapper word, campground. And the Grovant campground is one of the best places to go see moose. You can see the female moose loving on the male moose. Oh, a lovely moose. And then you can see another moose here. Now, let me pull back a bit. And you'll see the area is located and it shows you on the park map here. And let me check out these tabs. These tabs are super cool. Map 2. So you flip to the front 
And map two, it's a little bit dark here. Let's get some more light on the situation. Map two, the Grovon Campground, number eight right there. Hot spot number eight, totally handy. So you get to go exactly where the wildlife guides go, the professional photographers go, because they know, they make a living at this. You, you might be going to Grand Teton National Park for a few days, staying in Jackson Hole. Dang, I wish I could see elk, pronghorn, moose, bighorn, sheep, all this stuff. But where do I go? There is now a book on the market that tells you exactly where to go and at the time to do it. Now, the book also shows you the highlights of the area. Uh, the campground behind the meadow is prime location for moose. Boom. So if you only have a day or two and you want at least the best chance to see moose, this is it. This is the location. Now, I know that because I'm a photographer, but I, I do more technical photography. But I know a lot of wildlife photographers, man, they're like, they're always there. Hey, also, nice part is this map gives you directions and mileage and tells you how to get there from the town square in Jackson Hole, which is the number one starting place for people who travel into Grand Teton National Park. And it talks about the wildlife in the area. Moose uh, talks about when they show up, when they birth their babies in the beginning of May. Uh, the rut is an active time for the moose while they're out there. Site-specific photography tips tells you what sort of photographic lens you're going to need for this activity. And then, let's see, we'll flip over. Let's see, 21, 22. Yeah, so mo moose are just like crazy prevalent in Grove on campgrounds. Now, for people who live there, like, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. But I'm going to show you. There's a place called Dump Road. I didn't never, I'd never heard of this. I've heard of Pilgrim Creek Road. I've heard of Willow Flats. I hadn't really heard of Cattleman's Landing. My photography friends will laugh at me, but hey, there you go. And also there's another place in here called Ool Hill. Now, Ool Hill, yeah, it's, I, I'm pretty sure, come on, there we go, Ool Hill right there. And let me pull up the location there. That's location number 20, 17, 18, 19, 20, hotspot, Ool Hill right there. So what do you find in Ool Hill? Badgers! Check that out, little badger! I, and I've been in Jackson Hole for a long, long time. I've only seen a badger like once or twice. It's totally cool. They're the runny, slinky sort of things. They're hilarious. We don't need no stinking badgers or the honey badger video. Yeah, this is great. Also, wild, wild, other wildlife in the area, bison and wolves and coyotes and golden eagles. Now, bald eagles are pretty cool, but man, golden eagles... I, I have to say it's un-American, but that uh, that golden eagle is pretty cool too. And check out the, uh, you can see the, the coyote doing his jump there. And then near Elk Ranch Flat, you'll see some bison out there. But it gives you where the exact location is. Now, is this to say, hey, you're going to go out and you're going to harass animals and do all that? No, 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 you don't want to do that. And the book talks about, let's see, blah, 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 field notes. Where are we here? Yeah, safety. Okay, safety. The book has a very good section on safety about viewing and photographing and not interacting with the animals. Because these animals are powerful, they are wild, and every year there seems to be some sort of tragedy in Grand Teton or, near, or Yellowstone about people going in and trying to do a selfie with a bison or an elk and getting charged or getting whacked or a grizzly charges them because they got too close. So this book really talks about the important safety aspects because even a wolf is 100 and, you know, 90 pounds to 130, 140 pounds. And sure, most human adults, I mean, American adults at least, weigh 160 to 180 pounds. And you think, oh, you know, I just have no problem, man. If a wolf wanted to go after you, the wolf is going to mess your business up. Let alone the grizzly, the apex predator of North America on land. They're not going to just kind of mess you up. They're going to like end your life if you mess with them. So the book is very good. And it talks about the safety of these animals and how to avoid confrontations. Because when you are 
out there and you've got your huge lens and you know oh man I'm, I'm, i just want to get a little bit closer and take some more photographs you know this is totally awesome Woo! yeah check that animal jumping around you got to keep your distance you want a big lens wildlife photography is generally except for the real small animals you're going to want to do that farther away so just be conscious of that please so the information in here you can see some of the featured animals on the back focus come on elk bison fox wolves coyote landscape shots uh moose oh no let's see elk and another mountain sheep i mean just a huge array of opportunities so even though i love my wildlife guidebooks that give me very specific species information and what the male and female look like and all that it is arguably totally worthless if I can't find the darn thing. So this 50 Wildlife Hotspots by Moose Henderson in Grand Teton National Park is the best. There is nothing else like this book. Can't recommend it enough. So when you want to go out with your crazy rocket launcher and you know d take some photographs of some incredible animals, this is a tool to use. As a professional photographer, traveler, videographer, can't go wrong with this. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker and professional traveler, bringing you info that will impact your travel experience and give you a better time. Please like and comment on my video. Hit the little arrow to the right and expand the link. So I'll have a link to this book. A link to this uh, crazy Nikon camera lens if you really want to take some spectacular pictures with the Nikon 800 or 850. And a couple other links I'll put down below just for you so you can find these things. Please again hit that subscribe button that helps keep my channel going and it makes this process much easier. Costs you nothing, makes it easier for me for you. And please support my channel on Venmo and PayPal. Thank you very much for watching.